Hello crew, today we're going to talk about significant figures, which means don't forget about your pause button if you think you might want a little extra time to look at some of the numbers I'm going to put up. I'm going to begin by splitting this up into four different sections. First, we really need to get just a very surface look at what a significant figure is. Then I want to spend some time talking about why we need them. I think that's really important. You don't want to miss that. Then we'll go back and in some more detail, we'll talk about how you actually identify the significant figures and we'll take a look at how you use them in calculations. So first things first, we're going to take a look at what a significant figure or a sig fig, you'll hear me say a lot, what it is. It has everything to do with measurement. No matter what type of measurement you do, there's always some level of uncertainty associated with it. If you look at this graduated cylinder that's right here, we can see that the bottom of the meniscus is somewhere between the 52 and the 53 mark on the graduated cylinder. I might say that it's 52.8, but there's some level of uncertainty. What you certainly can't do is you can't say that it's a digit that is this specific, that is 52.8 and then all these other decimals. There's no way to know that information. A significant figure is one that you know is at least somewhat reliable that you could actually use and pull through on a calculation. In brief, let me give you a couple examples. This number has four significant digits. If I drop off the last digit there, the eight, now I'm down to three sig figs. Doesn't really matter where that decimal is in this particular case. Three numbers means three sig figs. However, there are some complicating factors. Sometimes digits are just placeholders. If I put this number in front of you, the two zeros out front are just holding the place of the number, meaning how big is the number. The only pieces of reliable information are the three and the five. Even if I plop another zero in between the decimal and my numbers, I still only have two significant figures. We'll talk about all the rules with that a little bit later in this video. But there's a take home message. Keeping track of significant figures allows us to keep ourselves in check with how good our answers are when we take measurements. It's not really an error analysis, but what it does is it keeps us from getting ourselves into trouble. So this is something that you can do very quickly and very easily if you're taking measurements and running an experiment. And it will make sure that you're not overstating any of your numbers. Now that we have that, let's take a look at why we're even having this discussion. Why are these things important? And to do that, I want to make up a little case study here. Let's say I have these two students that are in a group together. They're going to run a little experiment for me. I give them a, a slab of glass that has a height, a width, and a length and it also has a mass and I want them to measure and then calculate what the density is of this particular glass. These are the measurements that the students come up with. I'm highlighting this particular one because it's going to be important. This number only has two significant figures which happens to be the fewest number of sig figs out of any of these measurements. So keep that in mind. They would take all of these numbers, plug them into this equation for density, mass divided by volume, and then you can come up with this particular density down here. And that's what I might get if I don't let any rounding happen and I just use all of my numbers. Let's go ahead and get a little bit familiar with this spreadsheet that I put together for this calculation. I'm showing all of those digits out there that we just talked about. They're not going to all be reliable. I'm going to just go ahead and briefly clean up some of them just so it's easier for us to look at because we're going to do a quick little analysis with this case study. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of these individual numbers and we're going to see how varying those numbers would change our overall end density that we calculated. I'm going to start with the mass number that had four significant figures. That was actually more than any other measurements. We know that one with the most uh, most number of digits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that number to vary assuming that it is 11.44 but I'm going to say what would happen if I knew one more digit over 
and I could see how those things would have come together and rounded to my 11.44. So you'll notice that the smallest number that I've put up here is 11.435. That would round to my 11.44. And then the biggest number I have down there would also round to 11.44. So just adding this extra piece of information, an extra known digit onto here, I can see what my calculated densities would be if I left all these numbers that I've highlighted in red to be constant. You can see that my calculated density is going to now vary out in the fourth and the fifth digit. Okay, So already if I'm seeing changes out there in the fourth and the fifth digit based on some uncertainty over here in this number, you can see how they're related. So if I don't know the numbers on the left very well, I know where I don't know my numbers on the right. Let's take a look at one of these other measurements so that we can make sure we're truly getting a feel for this. Let's look now at this length measurement that has three significant figures. I'm going to play the same game. I'm going to say, well, what if I knew a fourth significant figure? How would that vary things if I kept all the other numbers constant? Over here, it's still going to vary my density number in the fourth and the fifth decimal. It turns out that it actually varies it by even more but we see that those are not particularly reliable numbers back there. I don't know if that fourth digit in density is a three or a two or a one or a zero. That is uncertain to me at this point. Now let's go in and look at this one that I highlighted before because it was our limiting factor. It only had two significant figures. If I make an assumption on this one that I could pull in one more digit and see how that digit is going to vary things. So uh, just to keep this in mind, every number that's highlighted here in blue is unknown. I don't know which of those it is. But so in my spreadsheet here, I'm calculating out as if I knew one of those combinations and I can see my different densities. And with this, I'm getting change in the third, the fourth and the fifth uh, significant figure over here. So if I don't know what my number was over here because of uncertainty, looks like I don't even know what my number is here in the third uh, sig fig because of uncertainty. So what does this all mean? This is the point of significant figures. What I can do is I can start with the understanding that every measurement that I take is going to have uncertainty and it would cause my n value to be a little bit different. From there, I can make the observation that whichever number has the fewest number of significant figures is going to cause the biggest changes over in my n value when I'm doing some calculations. So it becomes the limiting factor in my uncertainty. So what I have to do is I have to be able to identify which one of my measurements was the smallest number of significant figures and how do I accurately report my answer so that I don't overstep things. So I don't claim a digit as a certain number when actually I have no ability to, to claim that it's actually that. I have to put this little statement on the end here that says this is all how it works when we're doing calculations with multiplication and division just to make this discussion totally true right now. We're going to get into some other scenarios at the end of this video that deal with addition and subtraction and log. Okay, so why do we need sig figs? We need them so that we can keep ourselves in check, so that we don't overstate any answer. 